Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. Unity. Yeah. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Gotta make the world feel it. Come, come over here and check this sign out. But, but real quick, real quick, bro. Uh, our people are gunned down on the streets because we don't understand that you shouldn't rob one another. You shouldn't, uh, you, we don't understand that we need to respect the authority and the laws of the land. That's God's commandments. Right. We don't understand that. We hate knowledge. Sis, come and check the sign out and let me know what, what, where your nationality is, sis. What, what's your nationality? Uh, I'm trying to remember your name, bro. Brian. 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 When it comes down to it, knowledge is the key for our people to come back on top. Right. We have to love knowledge. In order to love knowledge, we love God by keeping his commandments. Read that in Hosea. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So God got a problem with you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. God got a problem with you, Brian. God got a problem with our people. Sis, what's your name, sis? I'm sorry? It's Alize. Alize? Alize, come over here. Because God got a problem with us. Let me know what, where, you, where, you, where you see yourself at on the sign. What was that? Uh, is that Issacon? So you're uh, so-called Mexican. God got a problem with the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Do you understand that, Alize? And that's what we're going over. Because you are an Israelite. You're a princess according to the Bible. Right. This is your brother. We are, we are the, of the same people. Those 12 tribes right here, we are the same people. But God has a problem with us right now. Finish this off real quick. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. We have, we, we, as a people, we're liars. We don't have truth amongst one another. We don't have mercy amongst one another. We see each other on the streets. We gun down one another. Because you, wear, because you wear red and you wear blue, we're gonna gun you down on the streets? That's how it is. You look at me wrong, you say something wrong to me, as a people, we have no mercy. We have no mercy in the land. That's why God has a problem with us. And the, and the main thing is, Alex, I'm gonna ask you a question. Is God, is God for all nationalities on the world? Is he for the white man, the Arab man, the Chinese man? Is he for, is he for everybody? You say no? Who, who is God for? I've heard I'm sorry, sis? I've heard different things. You've heard different things? So, but what do you think? You think he should be for everybody? Give me Amos chapter 3 real quick. Because right now, right now, I'm going to show you something, Alison. Because when it comes down to it, God has a certain set of people who he has chosen. Let, let's go. It says, uh, you got sinners? You live with your mother and your father? Just your mom or? I, I mean when you was little, of course, I mean. Yeah, you live just your mom? Do you think your mom should love everyone the same as she loves you? Huh? Why not? Just because you're her daughter, right? Watch this. Give me Amos 3 and 1 real quick. Watch this, watch this. That's a good point. So the question was, does Alizé thinks her mother should love her the same as everyone else? She said, no, because that's my mother. She's not everybody's mother. I would be mad as hell if my mother love my friend the same as me. No, 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 no. You gotta love me more. Watch this. Read Amos 3 and 1. Amos chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. O children of Israel. The blacks, Hispanics, you said you was Issachar. My brother Brian, hey, he was Judah. You got Issachar and Judah right here. Right. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom, but y'all both come from the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. God says, hear, O Israel, read. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, 
O children of Israel. O children of Israel, which y'all are, because y'all ain't, you ain't Mexican. That was a name put on you by the conquistadors right. in the Spain. When the Aztecs and the Incas and the Mayans were conquered in 1492. That was a name that was put on you. So you ain't Mexican. God calls you Issachar. Right. That's who you are. Read. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Say, you only. You what? You only. God says, my family, my children. Read that again. You only. God says, you only, Alize. Have I known of all the families of the earth. God says, I only know you. Why? Because you are my children. Right. Like how you said, you don't want your mom to love everybody the same as you. Why? Because you're her child. God says, I only love you more than everybody else because you're God's children. Right. So that God love everybody thing is a white man's doctrine. Right. It's, it's this doctrine. It's this doctrine. It's a Catholicism doctrine. It's a Roman Catholic doctrine. It's a Christianity doctrine. God loving everybody is not even in the Bible. It's not in there. God came for one people. He right. chose one people to be his. Right. And that's you blacks, Hispanics, and the American Indians. So that God love everybody thing, that doctrine was given to us in slavery in 1492, 1619, by the conquistadors, the Spaniards, the Europeans, the British, the French. When they put out behind on slave ships, because God tried to pop relief, the Hispanics went on slave ships as well. The Native Americans we're on slave ships as well. Right. We always enslaved. Hold that sign up right there. Hold that sign up right there. No, just that one, just that one. This is true depictions of the uh, conquest of the Indies, of South America, of North America. These are our forefathers that they did this to. The conquistadors and the Spaniards took our forefathers, hung them by the twelves and burnt them alive. Watch this. I'm gonna show y'all something. Where's it at? Where's the picture? Ah, oh, we gotta. Ah, oh, we gotta get better with it. Can Can y'all see this? Can y'all come a little closer? Can you, yeah, you hold, you hold it up so she can see it in the light. They can see it in the light. Yeah, yeah. You put the light on. Y'all, y'all see that picture right there? Can y'all see that? What is that Jesuit priest holding up to that that chief right there? Can y'all see that? The cross. The cross. What represents the cross today? What religion? I don't know. Catholicism, yeah, no, Christianity, you're right, you're right, you're right. the Roman Catholic right. Church. You're right, you're right. But you got to understand, when they first got here, when the conquistadors and the Spaniards got here, our forefathers wouldn't celebrate Christianity. Right. Our forefathers wouldn't celebrate Catholicism. Our forefathers knew who they were. Our forefathers were speaking Hebrew. Right. So that should let you know we should reevaluate what we were taught. We need to reevaluate what we were taught. You understand? That's what we got to do. What you got? Yep. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. One curse that we was going to go through as a people is that the Lord was going to scatter us throughout the four corners of the world. By what means of transportation? Slave ships. He was going to scatter us across the world in Africa, in Canada, in South America, the Brazilians, the uh, 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 Ecuador, uh, Peru, uh, Paraguay, Cuba, Chile, Guatemala, El Salvador, Venezuela. All of these are places that the Israelites are at right now. That's right. The Israelites are there right now. In Mexico, the Israelites are there right now. Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, the same people that call themselves Hispanic. Y'all not Hispanic. Right. Y'all are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. That's who you want. It's time to wake up, man. It's time to stand up. Where are the Caesar? You ever heard of Caesar Chavez? Who was Caesar Chavez? I just say. He's a civil rights movement, right? Well, whose rights though? Specifically, whose rights? Mexican rights. What about you, brother? What's your name? Carlos. Carlos? Yeah. What about you? Daniel. 
Daniel? Yeah. Y'all ever heard of Cesar Chavez? We never did. Uh, never heard of Cesar Chavez? That's what I'm here for. So huh? Listen to it. <laughs> Cesar Chavez was okay. a, what we would call oh, today. Oh, Cesar Chavez yes. from, uh, from uh, no, it's the, uh, California. Oh, really? Yeah. He was okay. from California. But he was for the Mexican rights. He stood up for the Mexican people. Right. So my question today is, where are the Cesar Chavez today? Where they at? Because we don't have people to stand up for Mexicans today. Bring it we don't on. have people to stand up for Puerto Ricans. We don't have people to stand up for the blacks. Right. Who's standing up for who? I'm going to tell you, y'all looking at brothers who going to stand up for you. That's right. You're looking at brothers who going to stand up for you, Bring for your up. rights. For what's supposed to be given to you freely. Right. We're going to stand up for that thing. Because we ain't just no regular people. God calls you Israel. Right. God is standing up for you. Right. God is calling you back home. Come back home to your father. Bring it out. What you got? Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will rise up for the Lord, Reed? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You believe in God? I know you. I know we've been talking to you, Brian. Brian, right? Okay. Oh, I don't know why I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. <laughs> so the question is, if you believe in God, right? You love God, sis. How do you show God you love him? Okay, that's good. That, I'm glad you said that. You try your best to follow the Bible, and you pray every day, right? I'm going to ask you a question. If me and you was together, and every now and then was a slap you in the face, but afterwards, I would say, I would say, you know I love you. And then slap it again. Psh. Baby, you know I love you, baby. Just forgive me. I won't do it again. I love you. And then do it again. Psh. Do I love you? <laughs> I don't love you. Right. But you know what's crazy? We do that same thing with God. We slap God in the face and still turn around and say, God, I love you. And then we slap him in the face again. And then say, God, I love you. Forgive me. And then we slap him again. Do you think that's love? Do you think we really love God? I mean, I mean we got we to gotta be real with ourselves. We gotta be, it's going to come a time in our lives, pride, Alize, we got to be real with ourselves. We going to lie to ourselves or we going to be real to ourselves and say, you know what, damn, I really don't love God. I love myself. Right, right. I love myself so much that I hate God, actually. And I'm gonna prove that. Watch this. What you got? Yep. The book of First John. So I'm gonna prove that we love ourselves so much that we hate God. Watch this. The book of First John, chapter five and verse three. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. So in order to show God we love Him, what we gotta do, Alize? We gotta keep the commandments. What we gotta do, Brian? There you go. Keep God's commandments. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and five. So now, like I said, I'm going to prove to y'all that we actually love ourselves so much that we hate God. Watch this. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear. The woman shall not wear. That which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment, Alize? Dresses. If you saw my big black behind walk around in a dress, What's the first thing you would think of your head? Be real. Yeah, I just, I don't know. You're right, man, this dude is crazy. <laughs> so wrong with this dude. What the hell wrong with this dude? Yeah. You probably walked the other way. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can't get away with this dude. You saw me in my big black mom with a beard and a dress on? Like, yeah, this dude is mental. But watch this, though. What's a man's garment? Right? <laughs> Pants. So if you would think of that way of a man in a dress, why would we think about yourself a woman in pants? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's still cross dressing, is it not? Do it again. Did you find it? Yeah, go back to Deuteronomy, go back to the next. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God says you ain't supposed to wear what he wear. Can you can you move your jacket to the side? Huh? Oh, you got an unbutton. 
That's, that's the, that thing keep you warm, I bet you that. Now, I, 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 I want you to see something, sis. I want you to see something. You should have on what he got on. Ain't no way in hell both of y'all pants. Y'all both wearing the same thing. And he's a man. You got a zip on your bed? You got a zip on your pants, bro? Why you got a zip on your pants, bro? To pull out. Zip, pull out, relieve yourself. Why you got a zip on your pants, I say? <laughs> That's because they were not made for a woman. Read on. For all that do so are abomination. God says, all that do so are an abomination. What's an abomination, Alexander? Bad. Really bad. What you think, Brian? Killing, destroying, fighting, All right, abomination. Give me Jeremiah 444, right? Yeah. 444. Jeremiah 444. A 44 and 4. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 44 and 4. God says a woman in pants is abominable. A man in a dress is abominable. A man with a bra is abominable, especially these days. You see in the news and the rap in the rap industry, men in dresses, men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women, homosexuality is rampant. God ain't with that stuff, man. God ain't with that. Jeremiah 44 and 4. What's this? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 4. How be it? I sent unto you all my servants. That's what we're doing. God sent his servants. We are God's servants. That's right. We're sitting here just to speak to you. Bring just to speak to you. I ain't know I was gonna talk to y'all tonight. But guess what? God brought y'all up here for a reason. Right. God brought us here for a reason. Tonight's y'all night. Tonight's y'all night to go home and really evaluate yourself. Say, damn, do I really want to serve God or do I want to serve myself? Or do I want to serve this man, the white man? Jeez. Do I want to serve Satan himself? Watch this. Read. Because everything we read, we read out the Bible. We only read the Bible out loud. That's how we do it. Read. How be it? I sent unto you all my servants. All my servants. The prophets. The prophets. We are God's prophets, believe it or not. Read. Rising early and sending them. Go ahead. Say. Watch this. Oh, do not this abominable thing. God says, don't do that abominable thing. If you know where pants is abominable, don't do it. If you know where a dress is abominable, don't do it. Smoking weed, don't do it. Getting high, getting drunk, don't do it. That's an abomination. Sleeping around with somebody that ain't your husband, that ain't your wife. That's an abomination. That's what we teach. Right. We teach marriage. That's right. We teach raising your kids. Right. Taking care of your wife. Right. We make sure that our sisters don't get done wrong. We made sure our brothers do what they're supposed to do as a man. Right. God says, don't do that abominable thing. Watch this. Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Now what? That I hate. God hate. You know God hate in the Bible? God said he hate those who do what? Abominable things. So right now, since I, I, I'm, remember I said, I'm going to prove to you that we love ourselves so much that we hate God. Does God hate you right now? Elizabeth? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you better believe it. That's right. God hates you right now, sis. So how do you get back in the grace of God? Because God ain't with us right now. When you look in our communities, God ain't with us right now. Drugs infested, prostitution, abortions. Think about it. And they're selling a letter right now. They sell all types of abominable things that they themselves don't even don't even eat, don't even use. That was set up by Arabs. The weed store set up by the white man to do what? To keep the blacks and Hispanics docile, stupid. That's why we don't read the Bible. None of us reads the Bible anymore. We rather smoke weed. We don't want to take care of our family. We rather smoke weed. We rather get high. We don't care about God. I want to say we love ourselves so much. We hate God. What you got? Read. The book of Luke, chapter 9 and verse 23. So this is what you got to do, Alizé. This is what you got to do, bro. Read. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me. If you want to follow Christ, if you say you really love God. So that's why it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a break check right now. You got to check yourself. You got to check yourself. You got to be valid yourself. Like scripture say, examine yourself. If you really love God, watch this. If any man will come after me. If you want to follow Christ. Let him deny himself. You gotta do what? Deny himself. You gotta deny 
what you love. You got to deny sin. Right. You got to deny the the pants. Right. You got to deny the drugs. Right. You got to deny the holes on the block. Right. You got to deny fornication. Girlfriend, boyfriend. God ain't with that. You got to no. deny that thing. And only the ones that truly love God go deny it. It's just like if I, if, like I said, I'm gonna bring it back together. If me and you was together, and I kept cheating on you, and you say, well, if you really love me, what I gotta stop doing? I gotta stop, <laughs> I gotta stop cheating. And then I say, well, baby, I do love you. And what you gonna say? Huh? No, I don't. Oh, you gonna be like, well, if you love me, prove to me, and don't don't do it no more. That's that's how God. That's what God is saying. If you really love God, don't do the things that get him angry. Right. Don't do it. Deny yourself. Deny yourself the sin. Deny. You got to. We don't. Deny himself and take up his cross. Take up your cross. Bear. Take up the things that's going to cause you to fall. Bear that thing. Be strong. Because it's going to be hard. Right. I mean, we've been living in sin for so long, it's going to be hard to stop. That's why you got to come around like-minded people. Like-minded women. I mean, I know all y'all see is men here. But we got women that have chosen to follow Christ. Right. They have chosen to let go of the pants. Have chosen to put on a dress. We got men that have chosen to do this. Come on this side and teach your people. That's right. We we got the Caesar Chavez's. We got the Malcolm X's. We got the Nat Turner's. Right. They on this side. Right. All we trying to get you through is wake up. Because guess what? All of y'all are Nat Turner's. Right. Y'all are the Cena Chavez's. Y'all are the Malcolm X's. Y'all are. Y'all just don't know it yet. Y'all are. Y'all got the power to stand for your people, do you not? Right. Y'all don't think y'all got the power to stand up for your people? You just don't know how to do it. Where, where do I start? How do I do it? And this is where you learn how to do it. But it starts with you. Right. Get yourself right in order to get your people right. That's how it starts. You got something? Okay. Titus 3. Yep, that's good. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Get Acts 3. Get Acts chapter 3. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore. God says we got to repent. We got to repent as a people. We got to repent. We don't. And be converted. Why? Because LSA. What's your nationality? Let's go. Huh? Uh, you ain't Mexican. What is God called? Issachar. That's right. Sister. right. Give me Isaiah 6515. You ain't Mexican, sister. I'm telling you. Would you like for me to call you? I'm not calling you this, but I'm going to say the word to get your attention. Would you like me to call you a bitch? How you feel if somebody was calling you a bitch? You're, oh, you see that? You'll fight me, right? Being called Mexican is being saying as being called a bitch. I'm going to prove that. Being called African American. It's been saying it's been called a bitch. Being called uh, Puerto Rican, being called Cuban, being called Jamaican, Haitian, Guatemalan, is the same thing as being called a bitch. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. What's the curse word? Bitch. <laughs> God said you're going to leave your name. You're going to leave Issachar for a curse word. Mexican. You know what Mexican means? That's why you call yourself Mexican. That's what they, and I understand that. I understand that, but that's what they taught you, man. I thought I was African American. I thought I was African American. That's what they taught us. Read. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. God said, you're going to leave your biblical name of Issachar for a curse. Who cursed you? Hold that sign up right here. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. So the question is, Alize, God says, huh? He said, people of the warrior God, yeah, that, that was some worship and idolatry. God says that you was going to leave your biblical name of Issachar, of Judah, for a curse. So the question is, who cursed you? Who gave you that name? Anybody know? You know, gave you the name Miskin or Aztec? Yes. So who? Conquistador. 
yours. Now, is that in the Bible? Do you think that's in the Bible? You don't think that history is in the Bible? I don't, I'm not seeing you. I don't know what you think. Probably. So if that history is in the Bible, that's your history. Which means you yourself is where? In the Bible. What's this? Deuteronomy 28, 37. The, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And that shall become an astonishment. An astonishment. An astonishing thing, right? A proverb. A proverb. Watch this, Alize. And a byword. A byword is being called outside of your God-given name. Right. It's like being called a wet guy. That's a byword. Like being called a nigger. That's a byword. Like being called a, uh, what do you call them? Uh, beaners. Oh, uh, greasers. That's a byword. God said we're going to leave our name for a byword. Read on. Among all the nations with the Lord. Among what? All the nations. All the nations know you by what? Mexican. All the nations know you by what, bro? African, right? Black, African, American. That's in the Bible. Did we not just read that in the Bible? God says all the nations will call you by a curse word. That means whatever nationality they call you, it's not your nationality. Right, that's right. It's actually a curse word. Right. So when people call me African man, no, no, I ain't. I'm an Israelite. Don't curse me. <laughs> you ain't for the curse me. You ain't for the uh, piss on me and, and tell me it's raining. Right. You ain't for the do that to me. I know who I am. Don't accept that. Don't accept the name that they gave you. Accept the name that God ordained you from the beginning right. of time. Bring it up. It's a call. Judah. That's what God calls y'all. Right. Read on. Let's go into that first. Uh, go back to Isaiah 65, 15. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, and verse 15. And ye shall leave your... So again, Alizé, what's your nationality? It's a call. That's right. That's who you are, sister. Break it up. That's who you are. You ain't Mexican. Don't let them... Okay, next time, they call you Mexican. Just tell them, can you prove to me that I'm Mexican? Yeah, see what I say? Can you prove to me that I'm Mexican? What are you going to say? Well, Mexican comes from Mexico. Okay, well, who named the land Mexico? Who do you think named the land? Name, name, the, name, the, name the land Mexico. Not the Aztecs. <laughs> Definitely not the Aztecs. Right. That name wasn't called Mexico. Right. They weren't speaking Spanish. Right. They were speaking Hebrew. Your ancestors spoke Hebrew. Guess who else spoke Hebrew in the Bible? Who do you think spoke Hebrew, see? The Israelites. Issachar, Asher, Reuben, Gad, Zebulon, right. Simeon, Naphtali, Manasseh, Ephraim, Levi, Benjamin, Judah. They spoke Hebrew. Right. Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans, they spoke Hebrew. Right. So since you ain't no Mexican, you ain't no Cuban, you ain't no Dominican, you were Israelite according to the Bible. That's, that's right. right. That's what that's what we are. That's what we are. Man, we gotta change our lives, man. We gotta change our mentality. Right. We gotta change, man. We have to. One way or another. One way or another, we gotta change, brother. We have to, man, because ain't nobody else gonna help us. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.